Thank you, John. Well, you know, New Mexico is a whole lot better off than the northeastern part of the country this morning, where these folks are waking up to a blizzard. Yeah, winter storm warnings are in effect for much of the northeast. This major storm system is expected to bring heavy snow and some bitter cold air. Marley Hall's in New York with the latest. The snow plows are on standby as the northeast braces for a major winter storm. I have a nine horsepower snowblower. I have three new bags of rock salt. I have two shovels and two suns. The heaviest snow is expected to fall tonight and into tomorrow. Up to a foot or more in greater Boston, 6 to 12 just outside of New York City, close to a half foot in Manhattan itself, and slightly lesser totals just off to the south. Many schools in and around Boston will be closed for the next two days. Sounds like it's going to be a very, it's going to be a hard snowstorm and it's, the transportation is going to be difficult. The storm has already caused major problems across the Midwest. As much as a foot of snow fell in some parts of Chicago, prompting hundreds of flight cancellations. And in Indiana, one person died and 15 were taken to the hospital when a pickup truck slammed into a bus. Pickup just lost control due to the inclement weather and uh, then went in, into the, uh, the traffic, oncoming traffic of the bus. Blowing in with the snow is bitter cold Arctic air. Across much of the country, temperatures are expected to be zero and below. Marley Hall for CBS News, New York. And New York's governor is asking people heading to work in the Big Apple to use mass transit in case the highways are shut down because of all that snow. It's a lot of work there shoveling that. By the way, just check Sunport's website here. All flights out of the Sunport this morning are on schedule, but the big mm. question for folks flying is you got to check your connections. Oh, That's yeah. where your problems are going to come in. All right, at 502, back here at home, hundreds of people in the metro area have the water back on this morning. That's after a New Year's morning water main break in Taylor Ranch that didn't have anything to do with the cold weather. I was like, you know, no biggie. I come out here and I see my car drenched in mud. Think? Yeah, the mud. That's going to be hard to get off. Yeah, it was a soggy mess. A 24 inch concrete water main broke about three hours into the new year at the intersection of Whiteman and Mojave. The break knocked out water to about 500 homes in Taylor Ranch, but water authority crews were fast on it, calling it the worst water main break they have seen in months. At one point, there was water shooting more than 30 feet into the air. Crews finished making temporary repairs late yesterday and service was restored. And in just the last day or so, six people have gotten hurt while sledding in the Sandias. We caught one man on camera, ooh, sledding head first downhill, ooh, and stopping at a tree. Now, this guy was not hurt, thankfully, but two others were on New Year's Day. They had to be transported to the hospital again on New Year's Day. A lot of people chose to go to the Tim K area for fun because the Capulin Snow Play area has been closed for the last couple of years. One sledder has a strategy to avoid getting hurt. Listen. And if you're going too fast, don't push your limits and just roll over off your sled and you'll stop. I think it's great for the public to be able to come out and have a lot of fun. I don't see a problem with it. I just, you know, exercise some common sense, please, and, and just be wary of where you're at and realize that you will not be able to stop on the ice. Four others were hurt sledding in the Sandias yesterday, according to officials who say they cannot close off the area because it's designated for recreation. Well, cold weather in Minneapolis is not making fighting fires very easy. These firefighters struggled in, get this, 13 below zero temperatures to put out this huge fire in an apartment building after what could have been an explosion there. Ice now covers much of the building after all of that water froze. Those in Minneapolis can expect a little relief tomorrow with temperatures warming up to about 17 degrees. That's before they dip back to below zero next week. There you could see part of everything, that water freezing extremely quickly. The first of the helicopters to take us home. Thanks, everyone. Now that's a sight and a sound for sore eyes there. Initially scrapped overnight because of bad weather. The rescue operation of these dozens of people trapped on a ship in the Antarctic is underway. At least two helicopters have taken them off the ship today. Well, it appears as if the ship was sitting on a high and dry and snowy field that's been stalled on that frozen Antarctic Ocean since Christmas Eve. At least one of the passengers on board, a top global warming scientist.
Throughout the ordeal, passengers used social media to keep in touch with folks and at one point stomping on the ice to make a helipad. 52 scientists and tourists are going to be on their way home. While almost two dozen others are staying on the ship. We'll have much more on this developing story coming up in about a half hour. Folks are sure going to be glad to be back on land. All right, New Mexico apparently did a whole lot better this year. Uh, this new year, I should clarify, than it has in the past when it comes to drunk driving. Aggressive patrols by state police landed two people in jail for DWI in Santa Fe County. Officers also handed out about 32 citations and a state police report for the 2014 New Year, the New Year Day, New Year's Eve, New Year Day, came in without any alcohol-related crashes or fatalities. Attorney General Gary King is grandstanding on the horse slaughterhouse issue because he's running for governor. That's the opinion of the attorney for Roswell's Valley Meat Company, Blair Dunn. Dunn filed a 173-page motion yesterday coming on the heels of a Santa Fe judge issuing a temporary restraining order preventing the company from opening before he can hold a hearing in the lawsuit filed by Attorney General Gary King. Dunn calls the suit, quote, clearly a publicity stunt. The attorney general's suit says Valley Meats operations would violate state law related to food safety, water quality, and unfair business practices. 13 states and several cities and counties all across the country have higher minimum wages this morning than they did two days ago, but that is not the case in Santa Fe. Minimum wage workers in the capital city must wait until March 1st to see a boost in their minimum wage. It'll probably go from 1051 an hour, which it is right now, to about 1065. It's based on the cost of living index for the West. Santa Fe New Mexican says that's just an estimate. We won't know the official amount until later this month. Now, Santa Fe had the second highest minimum wage in the whole country, but it is losing that distinction to San Francisco this year. Seattle Tacoma steamed into the number one spot after voters approved a $15 minimum wage in November for 1600 SeaTac transportation workers up there.